Hello, my dear YouTuber friends, and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is back on the Honeycomb XPC yoke. My several months later review. I actually first reviewed this back in April of this year, and I'll link that video down below for you in the description. How's it been holding up for me specifically with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? Well, I'll be telling you that in this video. I'll also mention, obviously, the good things about the Elk and things I found that are not so good about this unit. And at the end of the video, I'll come back and give you my recommendations, my several months later recommendations on whether to get this yoke or not. Well, okay, let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. So let's give you a bit of a recap of the yoke. This may be the first video you're watching about the XPC yoke. It's got a couple of buttons on the left handle there. It's got one at the back here, one at the front. Now for the front one, I actually have that assigned to brakes. If I don't get to my toll brakes quick enough, or for whatever reason they fail, I've got an emergency brake there. You've got a hat switch on here as well, so an eight-way hat switch. And a couple of rockers which are independent from each other. And these feel excellent to use. Very sturdy rockers there. It's difficult to bring that across in the video, but I hope you can get some kind of feeling from my action there. Couple more buttons on the right handle, a big red one. You can use that for push to talk if you want. Uh, I think I might have that as, as my autopilot master. No, I don't. I have that to turn off my Tolby. So you're going to see some infrared lights there from the Tolby, but I have that to enable or disable head tracking. Anyway, you can set that to what you want. A couple of other rocker switches that move from left to right here. Excellent quality. And like the Alpha Yoke, you've got a switch panel essentially built into the Yoke. You can see there, Master Avionics, if you want to start the Cessna 152 or 172 possibly the 182 from cold and dark, you can do that with this switch panel. These are automatically bound in Microsoft Flight Sim, by the way, so there's no separate setup by that. Once you've installed the Oak and you have it uh, connected to your PC or Xbox, you'll find these automatically bound, or by default, rather. Something different about the XPC Oak, this ignition switch, it, swing, it springs back to centre, as it were. So when you start your engine, it will spring back, which is a nice addition with this yoke. It's got a different, slightly different shape, which I'll get onto in a moment, than the Alpha yoke. For the yoke itself, now it's bound by this wire. I can just show you that. So you plug that into the body of the yoke and this to the yoke handles. And it gives a lot of stiffness and resistance to the yoke itself. Now that may catch you off guard. Just be aware, coming from... Currently, my, the yoke I was using a lot before this was the Velocity One flight yoke. Coming from that to this, I didn't actually like it at first. I found that a little bit too stiff compared to what I was used to. After a couple of flights, it began to, began to make or began yeah began to make perfect sense. Coupled with now, it's apparently four hundred times resolution up from the alpha yoke i don't own the alpha yoke so i can't compare the two people that i've seen videos that i've seen that have compared the two saying that this has a much higher resolution and whole effects sensors so it's incredibly accurate when you're moving the yoke it seems to instantly translate to whatever aircraft you're flying and you never bank like that you'll be going downwards into terra firma but it seems to instantly translate to whatever aircraft you're flying and that stiffness and that resolution of the oak it's something that has to be tried to 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 be believed so let's carry on with more features of the oak 
So carrying on with more features, the actual girth and weight of the elk is quite substantial indeed. Now I have the Logitech Throttle Quadrant attached with mine. This works well with other equipment I use. Uh, if you have, if you want to buy the whole set, so the XPC Yolk and the Bravo, Honeycomb Bravo, they're roughly about the same girth, same width and size. So you need some real estate on your desk. Now with my desk, it seems to fit fine. If I had both, I would have to move things along. What have as quite as much room for my mouse, and I may have to move my drink. And Russins, go and search my panel for Russins Mini Autopilot unit there. I did do a video on that, but it's not pertaining to this, so I won't link that one. But do go search my uh, YouTube videos for that one. But I would have to move things around. I could shift things around, but it's really going to fill the desk up. So something you would have to bear in mind. Now, another thing I'll mention, and this is a bit of a quirk, something I didn't like about the elk. Originally, I stuck this down, and I'll show you a picture off screen on, on screen of that, with the 3M sticker that's on the bottom of the elk. It's like a big sticker, and you can just stick the elk to a surface. Now, just take that off. It did work for a probably a couple of months and the yolk wasn't moving. I did one of the live stream flights where we were moving a lot going down rivers and I feel the yolk actually shifting coming off the table so the 3M sticker started to give. Now you can actually apparently wash that or do something, brush the 3M sticker and it will retain its stickiness. I didn't bother at that time. Included with the XPC yolk are a couple of clamps. I would say just go with these from day one. It just clamps the yolk firmly to your desk and you're not going to have that issue of the yolk coming up if you did use that 3M sticker. Don't really rate that sticker way of actually clamping the yolk personally. I rate, well, I would actually advise using the supply clamps. They don't take much up up much room any dimensions or weights you want by the way please don't ask in the description i don't have actually a pair of scales and i'm not going to get my tape measure out and measure every dimension i'll link down below the honeycomb website you can go and ask them or go and look on their website and you can find the dimensions for yourself and those will be more accurate Okay, I've mentioned it already, the the uh, Logitech Throttle Quadrant. I bought that purposely. I didn't think people would be doing many reviews of the XPC coupled with the Logitech th uh, Throttle Quadrant. Now, this does work via the Xbox Hub. Don't actually have that on the table at the moment, but I'll just stick a little picture on screen there. So with the XPC Hub, basically, or, or the Honeycomb Hub, you can attach... Even the Logitech Throttle Quadrant and the XPC Yoke. But on Xbox, no matter what I tried, I couldn't get these six buttons to work on the Xbox. Now, if you've managed that, please let us know down in the comments. I couldn't get them to work. The actual levers work fine on Xbox and PC, but you're missing a lot of button real estate there. I do use these in on the pc version of microsoft flight sim these work fine because the throttle quadrant plugs in via usb independently from the xpc yoke on pc on xbox you're going to have to plug both of these in to the X honeycomb hub yeah and i couldn't get those buttons to work so that's another quirk i have but at least the uh handles work so ideally if you're going to get this on xbox you really want the xpc yoke coupled with the honeycomb bravo throttle quadrant now that does give you some autopilot buttons and functions as well and a trim wheel and actually four different levers so you're getting a lot for your money for that but then you're going to be paying a lot more for the whole system but as i've mentioned it if you're on pc and because of this new flat design and these are all screws that you can unscrew. You can see I've got several unscrewed already via an Allen key. And you can see the screws there. I've got a couple of them just as an example there. You can unscrew them. And if you do that, and if you're, if you're on PC Microsoft Flight Simulator, have a look with what you can do. 
So there you go, if you own PC Microsoft Flight Sim, look what you can do with this unit. You can attach the multi-panel and radio panel on top. On top, remember it comes with its own switch panel, so you don't need that. And these seem to be the perfect fit, so you know you can alter your heading. Altitude and all that goodness, goodness indicated airspeed, vertical speed, that type of thing. And of course, Autopilot Master. Everything you need to do. I will link my advanced uses for the multi-panel video down below for you in the description. In case you're not seeing this seen that that can this unit can do a whole lot and of course the radio panel i do use this an awful lot i do like my ils frequencies and vor flying and that type of thing so i get a lot of use out of this and in fact this whole setup for pc microsoft flight sim coupled with that glorious xpc yoke and then you've got all these buttons you can use down here as well of course it's just a magical setup. And of course, the Velocity 1 rudder pedals. I've just got the best setup I've ever used. And my Tolby, of course, I use that an awful lot. The best setup I've currently ever used for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And of course, I mean, I've not got my laptop on, but I'll have my Navigraph navi charts showing on that. Or you can put a tablet on the side there. Maybe I'll do that because I do own a tablet as well. And you've just got one excellent setup. But of course, this is for PC Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're on Xbox, these panels will not work. Just keep that in mind. To get the best of the XPC yoke, you will need that Bravo throttle quadrant as well so i tell you what with that in mind let me now take you to my conclusion and recommendations on my several months later review for the xpc yoke so conclusions and recommendations times how I've found this over the past few months. I've not spoke about that excellent translation from the yoke, from the movement of the yoke. Whatever movement you're putting in there, you get a, fine, a mighty fine translation to the sim. So when you're pitching up, pitching down moving left or right it's like no other yoke i've tried coupled with that resistance it feels mightily realistic and the matte finish of the handles itself they just feel wonderful it just feels like quality in your hand and quality to use so much in fact i did a recent review again or uh, an, a, a sort of recap review of the logitech uh, flight yacht system and it took me a while to get back used to that because it's actually quite loose in comparison and the translation is nowhere near as good of course and all the while I had the Logitech or my Velocity 1 flight yoke on my desk I just wanted to replace it back with this XPC yoke because that movement is just incredible you know if Honeycomb didn't reach out, they reached out to me, essentially, with my original review I did of this and just said, look, we apologise. Go and watch that video. I won't go over that again. But they gifted me this. If they hadn't, I would still be using my Velocity 1 flight yoke. I was quite happy. But once I've tried this, there really was no going back. It really is a magical experience. There's no doubt about that. Great, I would say, if you're on PC and you don't own already the Alpha Yoke, I'm not sure it's fully worth the upgrade, but you would have to judge that for yourself. But you don't own a Honeycomb Yoke. You know, you can go for a, a sort of setup like this with the Logitech panel, especially if you already own this. And this cost me £40. So a fairly reasonably priced setup. You're going to have a magical experience, but you will need a set of rudder pedals. And I'll come straight on for my Xbox recommendations. If you're going to get the best, the most use from this yoke, you're going to need the XPC yoke. You can't use the Logitech panel, so you will need the Honeycomb Bravo unit as well. That's already going to cost you over £500. But you will need 
because there's no way of nowhere on here that you can really realistically set to rudder control you will need a set of rudder pedals if you're going for something like that you'll either need to get these or still the upcoming honeycomb charlie rudder pedals i've not heard much about them at this time but if you're gonna buy all these together you could be looking at over 800 pound for xbox and you will need some kind of setup like this with the brav honeycomb bravo throttle quadrant so you get that autopilot goodness and so you can realistically have a good setup for xbox and it's going to be the so that's going to cost you much more than the series x even by itself and you've got to think to yourself, is that worth the money? My recommendation for the Xbox would actually be the Velocity One Flight Yacht System. You get triggers, adaptive triggers on the back of that. So you don't even need really a set of rudder pedals. Although rudder pedals really are a good idea. But you know, that's going to cost, you can buy that for sub £300 at the moment. That's my recommendation for Xbox. Unless you have that money to spend and you want the best of the best. I felt no better yoke in my hand from Microsoft Flight Sim so far. And I think this is going to be hard to beat. Even from the high end yokes, I wonder how they compare with the actual movement and translation and resolution of this yoke. It really is magical. And you know what? I can keep going on about that, but I'm going to leave it there. Do let me know your own thoughts. Do you have the XPC yoke? How are you finding it? No doubt you're going to say fantastic as well. I've yet to see a negative review on this system. But do let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, of course, many more Flight Simulator videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.